their dream of playing in the NFL. Some have graduated and are uh, working on getting a job in the real world. And we appreciate them and their Hokies for life. I'd also like to just touch on Marshawn Williams. Uh, just, <clears throat> I think is a fantastic display of support from the Hokie Nation uh, the other day. Uh, I'm encouraging Marshawn as he'll no longer play football to stay around our program. Uh, I just think he has a lot to give to our young kids and the kids that know him with his personality and his support and the way he's handled tough things that have, that have happened to him really through no fault of his own. And uh, you know, I want to make sure that we find a way in whatever Marshawn's comfortable with to keep him around our program. Um, <clears throat> as far as recruiting, I do want to thank everybody that helped us put this class together. A tremendous amount of personal sacrifice from support staff to assistant coaches to people across campus and dining services. And you know, our our staff up and down the hallway. Uh, there are a lot of a lot of hands that go into this, and uh, it's a lot of Saturday afternoons away from from family and kids and uh, up there to help us continue to build this program. And I'm very thankful for all of those people. I'm not going to list them all because I'd be up here all day, but it's just uh, another great example of the Hokie Nation. People. Uh, pouring their, their heart and soul into helping give us a chance to be successful. Uh, we've got several early enrollees that are already here. Uh, we've welcomed uh, over the past couple weeks. They're fully ingrained in a, in a full class load, and, and in our off-season program, they're doing very well. Um, excited to get those guys. It seems to be a I don't know if it's a fad or a trend or, or really what the difference between a fad and a trend is, but there seems to be a larger number of those guys in recent history, and, and I think we're doing a good job handling those guys and, and enjoying having them here. And then obviously today, uh, welcoming a large number of, of kids into our family to, to be Virginia Tech Hokies for life. Um, and I think we, we took a large step forward today. We addressed several needs uh, on both sides of the ball, uh, we helped our, our football program. Uh, we've continued to make inroads in this state, in this region, uh, as we continue to, to try and be competitive and ultimately win uh, an ACC championship. Raise your hand. We'll get you a microphone, Andy. Yeah, I was kind of curious. It having a full year to put this class together. How different is the feeling today than obviously last year where you sort of had that two-month sprint to the finish? Yeah, last year was speed dating, um, trying to get to know people. We had a large number of kids come in at semester again last year, uh, trying to get those guys uh, you know, acquainted with those guys uh, before the dead period over Christmas break and then a kind of last rush. Uh, this is much more calculated. I, shouldn't, I probably shouldn't use that term. It's just I'm much more comfortable just because I've been around these guys a lot more and their families. And that's not to say that the kids that signed last year, if we look at any differently, it's just uh, we're happy to have those kids in here too. It's just as a class we've been able to spend, or I personally have been able to spend a lot more time with these kids and, and their families and continue to, to teach them about Virginia Tech and what Virginia Tech can do for them. So, you know, those transition classes are always difficult, uh, but I feel really good about, about the way we handled that transition and, and how this one went. Coach, one of the things you mentioned to us last year was you didn't like surprises on signing day. Did you achieve that this year, no surprises for good. you? Yeah, it's, it's, it, was a, it was a good day for us. You know, we, um, everything we thought was going to happen happened, and everything played out, and guys took care of their business and, and got things done. We've had... Uh, you know, there's a lot of publicity and fanfare that comes in recruiting. We understand that and respect that. And, uh, you know, there's, a, there's several guys that um, have been committed to us for a long time and have turned down many other opportunities and also did not publicize those opportunities. And in turn, 
limited maybe their fanfare, but they all know that the, that the fanfare we have for them is not limited. And uh, really excited to, to get those guys. Um, it's amazing to see kids, different kids handle the recruiting process and in turn how their senior years turn out and, and how their feelings about recruiting are uh, when, when, when they're able to kind of separate things and, and, and make a good decision and, and stay with it. So. Justin, you, you guys obviously are, are going to be looking at a, a couple of new quarterbacks here in the spring with, with Hendon and A.J. You were sort of thrust in a position where now their role is critical, obviously, with Gerard's departure. With respect to Gerard and how that whole process went down, did you have an inkling that that might happen? Did he tell you at some point during the season? And, and how did that whole process go? Yeah, well, we, we, we had a pretty good idea that that's what he was thinking about doing. Um, you know, in terms of you know him finally making up his mind and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I don't know the day that he that he made that decision, but we, you know, knowing Gerard and being around him, we uh, we had a pretty good idea that that's that's what he wanted to do. Did, did you sort of immediately go into a mode when he started talking about that of preparing for the fact that he wasn't going to be around and sort of ramp up? Well, certainly we need to be prepared for that. Him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. You said on the webcast, I just sort of heard part of it, that when you were looking at A.J. Bush, you were trying to find the right guy to fit in. I was wondering if you could sort of expand on that. What exactly were you looking in the quarterback room? Well, uh, Kind of where I was trying to go with that was sitting here with Josh Jackson and Hendon Hooker um, and Jack Click as well, three young guys that are eager to, to get better and improve and help this football team, three guys that are coming into this full of competitive spirit and, and a willingness to, to learn and develop. Um, I just wanted to make sure if we brought an older guy into that room, that he was going to help facilitate that and not squash that growth. I thought that was really important um, for us moving forward. So we did as much uh, research on AJ in, in, from that manner uh, as we could. And uh, you know, I think it's going to be a great mix in there. I've been really pleased getting to know AJ and you know, and the other younger kids, I, I think they're really going to work well together and continue to push each other to try and develop and, and be as good of players as they could be. In the back, Jason. Coach, I know you, you've, you guys have, have gotten, or in this class, got guys to flip, and you had, you know, one or two that, that flipped from you. It just seems like it's kind of becoming more of a trend with guys kind of going back and forth. I don't know how, you know, how much they put in the term, and it's talking in the term commitment like a lot of us do, but I guess what are your thoughts on that? Is it good, bad, just kind of how it is, or how do you, what, do you, what do you see on guys that flip back and forth like that? Well, I think, I think the kids have a right to make the decision that's best for them. You know, everybody, and you know, we'll just use Dylan Rivers as an example. Um, that didn't happen overnight. You know, that wasn't a, you know, Dylan didn't just uh, wake up one day and decide uh, that he was going to go to a different school. Um, that was a year of relationship and becoming comfortable with each other um, and all those sorts of things. So, um, you know, I think whatever, I'm okay with guys getting it right and, and doing what they truly want to do. I mean, Dylan, Dylan's recruitment was not a, um, a, a flip-flop deal all over the place, you know, widely publicized issue. It was uh, us asking politely if, we would ha if I could have a chance to, to get to know him and show him what Virginia Tech could do, him saying yes, and us taking a year to develop that trust. Does it change at all, the, how, like how, either how you guys approach recruiting or your mentality that just because so many guys seem to do well, that? Well, the biggest you know? thing for, as the head coach is just <laughs> handling the number. Like, we don't have infinite scholarships. And, um, 
making sure that, that we calculate it out correctly, never fully knowing for sure where it's actually going to be is the stress point for me. Um, but we handle it fine. Front seven seem to be pr pretty critical for you guys in this uh, recruiting cycle. Can you talk about uh, how well you think you guys did there? Yeah, defensively, uh, we had to uh, continue to add some depth on the defensive line um, uh, and and at the linebacker position. We just uh, needed to get those numbers back up. And with quality, good people, I think we did a, a fine job of that. Uh, on the offensive line, we didn't graduate a large number of guys. Uh, we will this year. So we tried to plan a little bit ahead in terms of that, that turnover. You know, the offensive line is not necessarily a, a position where guys walk in and play immediately. It's usually a developmental position. Um, but very important for your future. And then a tight end is where we offensively really needed to, to make some strides. Um, you know, Lasitas brings us that on the line guy that can block the C gap and 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 really help us help us out that we've we've been missing a little bit. Brad Cornelson was saying that you guys were looking for explosive receivers in this class, guys that can make people hold their breath when they have the ball. Who do you think fits the bill of some of the guys you've signed? Well hopefully they all do. Um, you know the the general term is you know, we felt like we needed some guys to play on the inside. You know, we have some guys that play on the outside. It is a little bit different skill set in what we would eventually like to do. Um, you know, and, and we felt like, you know, between Sean and, and Khalil and Hezzy, you know, we've got some guys with some versatility that, that can, you know, maybe as we move forward be both ball carriers and receivers in the slot and all the little short stuff that you see people doing nowadays that are really essentially part of the run game, but, but they end up going to the, to the wide receivers. When recruiting defensive players, how beneficial is it to have someone like Bud Foster, who's you know, one of the established defensive coordinators in the country? Well, sure. Having a track record of success uh, on either side of the ball or as a program is, is beneficial. You know, obviously, Bud... His name resonates well in, in the area and across the country. And uh, when when you can sell proven success as a program, as a as a school, as a community, and ultimately on the offense or defensive side of the ball, uh, I can't do anything but help you. Coach, uh, in your opinion, what's the toughest part of the recruiting process, and what's the easiest part of it? Well, I don't know. the 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 best part, I could tell you that, is is um, when you sit down and get to meet and and really get to know these families. Um, you know, everybody says it's a relationship business, and it is. That's true. Right? Bottom line is, some people want relationships, and some people don't. And when you really find those players that have great support systems, or sometimes they don't have great support systems, and they genuinely are looking for something and that that's something they're looking for is what you have and you get a chance to help develop that and facilitate that and get to meet the great people uh, behind the kid uh, every step of the way to me that's the that's the fun part that a lot of people don't talk about you know there are not a lot of not a lot of articles about that um, so that's you know that's the fun part the you know the hard part is it's just uh, it's consistent. You have to stay on it. This is not a. Uh, uh, it's not two and a half weeks of recruiting. You know, it's just a consistent uh, process, and it takes time, and it takes multiple interactions. It takes multiple opportunities to be in front of um, the student athlete and his uh, support system. It takes multiple trips to campus to continue to to, to gain that comfort level, and you've got to stay consistent you can't get tired of it statement 17 was the name of your class this year what kind of strides do you feel like you made in the, in the state this year well I mean everybody is going to point to 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 Devin Hunter as um, a highly recruited young man that that chose to come to Virginia Tech for all the right reasons another guy with a great support system that 
uh, that have allowed him to be uh, or allowed him the opportunity to be successful in, in all areas of his life. But, um, you know, I point to the other guys too, uh, you know, Rayshard Ash Ashby and Dylan Riz Rivers and Hezekiah Grimsley and, and the other guys that, that have come aboard that, that wanted to be a part of this. And, you know, evaluation is, is, is the key to recruiting. You know, you have to sell your program and you sell your coaching staff and you sell the, the school and the community. But making sure this not just the physical skill set but the mental skill set uh, matches is an important part of, of the entire thing. You had a handful of guys today that were making decisions, and I, obviously you, with those you just have to hope, I understand. But but with, with respect to Taj Capehart, that was a guy that, I, that you had – committed for a while how disappointing was it to to lose him today well we know all of these things you all just don't so it's not surprising like we know what's going on so when a guy sits up there and he's got hats and all that stuff we already know we've already either moved on or or celebrated so it's not um not like we're all sitting in there on the edge of our seats trying to figure out what's going on. So, How disappointing was it, though? It's not, it's not disappointing at all. We have a tremendous class that we're excited to sign that I think have great potential. We wish all those guys that are going other places all the best. Um, you know, we, we don't hold any ill will towards anyone. We want to do a great job and sell Virginia Tech for the right reasons. Not knowing anything about Hooker other than... His, he's got looks like he's got great size and pretty decent arm. Runs around a little bit. What did you guys like so much about him? And with that in mind, and the fact that you had to develop him, you had a guy here that was pretty developed, but probably I don't. A lot of people seemed like they, they, he needed another year to develop. Did you encourage Gerard to stay another year? Was that a Hinden Hooker question or a Gerard question? <laughs> so what did we like about Hinden? Aside from the things that everybody can see on film, uh, I think he has a great personality and knack for leadership. He's a highly intelligent young man from a great family. Uh, many, many opportunities to, to go to other, other places. And, you know, his dad, I talked to him on the phone many, many months ago. And, um, you know, when parents say, you know, Coach, we were looking for something and, and – what you all have is exactly what we're looking for. Without even us telling you what we're looking for, it makes you feel like it's a good match. And, and um, you know, that is one of the many things on the list of attributes for Hendon um, that we feel good about. As far as, it's not my, in my opinion, it's not my job to encourage or discourage uh, guys from going or staying. It's my job to inform. Uh, you know, if they want my opinion, I'll be happy to give it to them, uh, but only if they ask it. Uh, but when guys are trying to make those decisions, it's my job to paint the picture of what it would be like to stay and paint the best picture we can about what it would be like to go. Um, whether that's using that's calling all of our resources together so that those guys and and their families can can make the best decision now as far as those particular conversations whether it's Bucky or Isaiah or Gerard those are private conversations you know those are conversations between me and the player so um, you know that's kind of my stance in general on on that whole deal and how I view my role when those guys are trying to make those decisions Coach, there's an article in, in Sports Illustrated last week about social media and I guess more specifically graphics and how, you know, how much of a role that's played in recruiting. How much in your mind has that changed or you know, over the, even the last couple of years in your experience and for you guys, I guess, where do you feel like you stand in, in that aspect? And well, it's even with this class. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think it's basically become a separate industry of guys that, um, that, they create those graphics and continue to find different ways to to put uh, Virginia Tech and that player uh, in the right light and 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 kind of not so much sell the, the school but continue to show them 
what we have and, and what it's like. And so, yeah, well, I think we're doing really well. We're continuing to get better. I think uh, when you look at the, the strides that Virginia Tech has made in the last several years in terms of recruiting staff, you know, it's a tribute to Witt and his staff and their foresight to know that we need to continue to grow that. I'm not interested in just bringing people in just to fill chairs. I want to make sure we have a clear purpose for them, but uh, we're getting better. Last one there, Ricky. You mentioned that linebacker depth was really important for you guys in this class. You get four of them. Do you have a feel of where they fit, whether it be at Mike or back, or is that something more you take a, a wait-and-see approach in practice? Uh, you never know exactly. I mean, you, you do your best to project um, where guys will end up, but um, you just you just don't know, and there are some definite nuances between those two spots. And um, you know, we try and say this is where we envision you guys at, you know, but it may it may switch as as we get further down the road. All right, thank you, everybody. Appreciate you coming out today.